morning today we are going through the chapter 3 in the novel animal farm written by george orwell let us begin with the leadership of the pigs animals started to reap the harvest with the instruments that were made by human beings they felt some difficulty in handling them the pigs did not work with them but they did brain work they presented the solutions of those problems that were faced by the animals it was declared that animals would supervise the work of other animals napoleon explained that the pigs possessed the worldly knowledge thus all the animals worked hard under the leadership of pigs the harvest was reaped by animals in two days they realized that they were doing the work for themselves therefore they did not waste the harvest every animal down to the decks and hens works hard to bring the hay in the pigs are clever enough to work out how to do this without tools that involve standing on two legs while boxer and clover know the difficulties of bringing hay in because the pigs are so intelligent they don't actually work and instead assume leadership positions it takes the animals less than time than it ever did mr jones to bring in the hay and the harvest is bigger than it's ever been throughout the summer things work perfectly the animals are thrilled to eat food that they produced for themselves and not have to share it with the humans though it seems like everything is going smoothly not that the pigs are already elevating themselves above the rest of the animals by assuming leadership positions rather than laboring physically this again is an indicator that class divisions are developing on animal farm and that the pigs are the ones who will end up assuming privileged upper class roles in the society next we are going through the prosperity of animals hard labor of animals resulted in a good harvest some things prove difficult such as threshing the corn without a threshing machine threshing means separate grain from corn but the pigs are clever enough to work it out and boxer is strong enough to pull them through boxer used to work hard even the regime of jones after the freedom he worked harder everyone admires boxer they guess that his labor is equal to three horses he even gets up 30 minutes earlier than everyone else to labor where he is needed most his motto becomes i will work harder all the animals that included duck and hen also did work to the best of their capacity save for molly and the cat molly a white mayor struggles to rise in the morning and often leaves work early because of stones in her hooves while the cat disappears during work time and shows up for meals with excellent excuses benjamin seems unchanged since the rebellion he mysteriously repeats that donkeys live a long time and that no one else has seen a dead donkey when asked if life is better without 
Mr. Johns. Boxer is a representation of male peasants in the USSR. Its full form is Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. The success of Animal Farm, I already told you, which represents the Soviet Union, rests on these peasants performing as much labor as possible, something that boxer throws himself into with enjoyment. His personal motto suggests, however, that he is overly idealistic and is putting the ideals of the revolution above his own self-interest in a way that, in the end, won't serve him. Meanwhile, Benjamin broadly represents intellectuals who the novel suggests could see what was going to come. His mysterious answers suggest that he is aware that revolutions happen on a cycle and that the farm will inevitably find itself right back where it started. Now we are going through the Sunday's ceremony. On animal farm, there is no work on Sundays. Pigs declare that after breakfast, a meeting in the form of a ceremony is to take place on every Sunday. After a late breakfast, the animals hoist a flag that snowball painted with a white hoof and horn on a green field. The green color of the flag stands for the green fields of England. White horn and hoop are the symbols of the freedom of animals. The animals then attend a meeting in the big barn where they discuss the work of next week and present resolutions for debate. The pigs are the only ones who suggest resolutions and Napoleon and Snowball are the most active debaters. However, they never seem to be able to agree on anything. The meeting ends with a round of Beasts of England. Later on they indulge in entertainment. On paper, the system that the animals work out should work for everyone. In theory, everyone gets a say in what happens. However, it's still telling that the pigs are the only ones who ever speak up. They do this because of their education and their rising class status, while the animals' willingness to go along with this suggests that they will be easily manipulated into giving up their voices in the future. Literacy among animals The pigs begin to learn various crafts like blacksmith, carpentry, etc. The pigs adopt the harness room as their headquarters and study books from the farmhouse in the evenings. Snowball continues to organize animal committees. He founds an egg production committee for the welfare of hens. He also starts the whiter wool movement for the sheep but these projects fail. He begins to educate other animals. Napoleon wants to educate only the pigs. He argues that pigs have showed their keen interest in reading and writing. But Snowball succeeds in educating many of the animals. His only success is with the reading and writing classes. Every animal is somewhat literate by fall. The dogs learn to read well, but only read the seven commandments. 
Muriel learns to read and reads newspapers out loud. While Benjamin is completely literate but refuses to read. Clover learns the whole alphabet but cannot read words. While Boxer learns the first four letters and nothing more. Molly, the most ideal among animals, meanwhile learns only to spell her name. The different animals vary in degrees of literacy as well as what they choose to read once literate. Speak to how class will continue to develop thanks to language. The dog's choice to read only the seven commandments suggests that they will become loyal to the cause and are uninterested in truly educating themselves. While Muriel's willingness to read newspapers suggests an interest in the outside world and possibly in other ideas of how life should be. The less intelligent animals such as the sheep and hens learn only the letter A and struggle to memorize the seven commandments. Snowball reduces them to the maxim four legs good, two legs bad. Maxim means motto. At first this goes over poorly with the birds who have only two legs. But Snowball explains to them that what makes humans evil is their hands and birds don't have hands. Everyone else also learns the maxim and the sheep take to repeating it for us on end. Coming up with this maxim illustrates how easy it can be to purify somewhat complex ideas into an easy digestible, easily repeatable phrase that lacks nuance. Nuance means a subtle difference in or shade of meaning, expression or sound. It's impossible to tell from the phrase that Snowball's explanation should actually be correct. But because of his grasp of language, he can essentially make the maxim mean whatever he wants it to. Next we are going through Napoleon's opposition to imparting education. All the animals are keenly interested in the literacy movement that is launched by Snowball who organizes many committees in order to make his purpose fulfilled. He is of the opinion that only literacy could make the animals aware of their rights. Napoleon does not show any interest in the literacy movement of Snowball. He explains that to impart education to all the animals is of no use. He wants to educate only the young. Napoleon takes an interest in the nine puppies born to the dogs which arrive soon after the hay harvest. He takes them to educate himself, believing that it's more important to educate the young than teach everyone else to read. The other animals soon forget about the puppies. Notice that when Napoleon insists on educating the young, the only young he seems truly interested in educating are the puppies, that is children of a literate, somewhat powerful class, not the offspring of any of the cows, sheep or chickens. Doing this allows Napoleon to start to dictate who is worthy of education and through doing so dictate who is able to move up the class system and gain power. 
then we are going through the superiority of pigs the animals do discover that the missing milk ends up in the pig smash mash means a soft mass made by crushing a substance into a pulp sometimes with the addition of liquid the pigs insist that they should get all the fallen apples which the other animals assumed would be divided evenly squealer makes the case that the pigs are brain workers and therefore need the milk and apples in order to care for everyone else if they don't get them mr johns will come back the animal sees his point and say nothing when the main crop of apples also goes to the pigs squealers insistence that the pigs need the milk and apples because of their work shows that the pigs are already beginning to take advantage of the system they have set up now we are going through the critical comments of this chapter the chapter deals with the new developments in the lives of animals for the first time they enjoy the fruits of their labor after revolution all the animals except benjamin feel great pleasure but benjamin who symbolizes intellectuals remain silent discussions and conflicts between snowball and napoleon stand for the conflicts between stanley and trotsky through the character of snowball the novelist proves that trotsky had been a noble benefactor of russian people snowball formulates many committees to solve the issues of animal farm and tries to confirm that animals are able to govern themselves trotsky too tried his best in conveying the news to the rest of the world that communist government is the best form of government in the entire world the most interesting incident of the chapter is the seizing of the milk and the apples by the pigs squealer tries to convince the animals that the pigs do the mental work therefore they need milk and apples for their health thus the novelist makes us aware of the communists attempt at imposing their superiority over the people of russia the animals who expect an equal distribution of the apples are once put to exploitation thus we observe the violation of the commandment all animals are equal the writer points out through this incident that communism which was established in russia after russian revolution aimed at making the lives of communities more prosperous animal farm in the moonamath chapter lode kadannu pogumbulu ella mrugangalum valare adhigam kadina adhwanam cheyugeyum rendu divasathinullil thanne vilavedupp muluvan aakugeyum aa vilavedupp mr johnsone kal padin madangaanennu theliyikkugeyum cheydu മോളി എന്ന വെള്ള കുതിരയും പൂച്ചയും ഒഴികെ ബാക്കി എല്ലാവരും വളരെ നന്നായി പണിയെടുക്കുന്നവരായിരുന്നു പ്രത്യേകിച്ച് ബോക്സർ എന്നാൽ പന്നികളപ്പോഴും തങ്ങളുടെ നേതൃത്വ പാടവം തെളിയിച്ച് മറ്റു മൃഗങ്ങളെ നിയന്ത്രിച്ചുകൊണ്ടിരുന്നു ഞായറാഴ്ചകൾ അവധി ദിവസങ്ങളായി പ്രഖ്യാപിക്കുകയും ഒരാഴ്ചയ്ക്കുള്ള പ്ലാനിങ്ങുകൾ നടക്കുകയും പ്രത്യേകിച്ച് നെപ്പോളിയനും സ്നോബോളും തമ്മിൽ പല ചർച്ചകൾ നടക്കുകയും അവർ തമ്മിൽ പല അഭിപ്രായ വ്യത്യാസങ്ങൾ ഉണ്ടാവുകയും ചെയ്തു 
ഞായറാഴ്ചകളിലെ യോഗങ്ങളെല്ലാം ദീസ്റ്റസ് ഓഫ് ഇംഗ്ലണ്ട് എന്ന ഗാനം പാടിക്കൊണ്ട് അവസാനിക്കുകയാണ് ഉണ്ടായത് എല്ലാ ഞായറാഴ്ചകളിലും ഉച്ചഭക്ഷണത്തിന് ശേഷം വിനോദത്തിനുള്ള സമയമായിട്ട് മാറ്റിവെക്കുകയുണ്ടായി അതുപോലെ തന്നെ മൃഗങ്ങളിലെ സാക്ഷരത വളരെയധികം ഇമ്പോർട്ടൻസ് കൊടുക്കുകയും എല്ലാ മൃഗങ്ങളും അറ്റ്ലീസ്റ്റ് അക്ഷരങ്ങൾ എഴുതാനെങ്കിലും പഠിക്കുകയുണ്ടായി ഓരോരുത്തരുടെയും പഠന നിലവാരം വളരെ വ്യക്തമായിട്ട് നമ്മൾ പറഞ്ഞിട്ടുണ്ട് എന്നാൽ നെപ്പോളിയനെ പുതിയ തലമുറയെ മാത്രം പഠിപ്പിക്കണം എന്നൊരാശയമാണ് ഉണ്ടായിരുന്നത് സ്നോബോൾ അതിനെതിരായിരുന്നു അദ്ദേഹം എല്ലാ മൃഗങ്ങളെയും എഴുത്തും വായനയും പഠിപ്പിക്കാൻ ശ്രമിക്കുകയും അതിലൊരുവിധം വിജയിക്കുകയും ചെയ്തു ഇനി എടുത്തു പറയേണ്ടത് ഫിക്സിൻ്റെ ആധിപത്യം തന്നെയാണ് ഈക്വലായിട്ട് ഷെയർ ചെയ്യും എന്ന ആശയത്തിന് പകരം പാലും ആപ്പിളും ഫിക്സിന് മാത്രമായി വിധിക്കപ്പെട്ടു സ്ക്വീലർ എന്ന പ്രാസംഗീകൻ അതിനും വളരെ വ്യക്തമായിട്ടുള്ള കാരണം നൽകുന്നുണ്ട് മിസ്റ്റർ ജോൺസിൻ്റെ തിരിച്ചുവരവിൽ നിന്ന് ജനങ്ങളെ രക്ഷിക്കണമെങ്കിൽ തീർച്ചയായിട്ടും ഫിക്സിന് കൂടുതൽ ആരോഗ്യം വേണമെന്നും അതിനായിട്ടാണ് അവർക്ക് പാലും ആപ്പിളും കൊടുക്കുന്നത് എന്ന ആശയമാണ് അദ്ദേഹം മുന്നോട്ട് വെച്ചത് ഐ ഹോപ്പ് ഓൾ ഓഫ് യു ഗോട്ട് എ ക്ലിയർ ഐഡിയ അബൌട്ട് ദ ചാപ്റ്റർ ഫോർ ഡോണ്ട് ഫോർഗെറ്റ് ടു ഗോ ത്രൂ ദ ക്രിട്ടിക്കൽ കമൻസ് റിലേറ്റിംഗ് ദിസ് ചാപ്റ്റർ